So here's a summary I wrote about that article with my autistic perspective. Autism Speaks was founded by Bob and Suzanne Wright in 2005. Their goal in launching the organization was to raise autism awareness and dollars for autism research. The Wrights are grandparents of an autistic. Their daughter, Katie Wright, is mom to Christian. The Wrights state that their grandchild lost his 800-word vocabulary and had severe meltdowns and other changes as a toddler. This happened after the birth of his sibling and a move to a new family home. The Wrights witnessed medical science's helplessness and decided to do something about it. Wright was not satisfied when doctors told him that there wasn't a medical abnormality his grandson had that they could treat. Wright was further informed that many autistic children did develop medical problems and that these could be treated if and when they occurred. This shocked the entire Wright family. There was nothing that could be done for this child? Well, that just wasn't good enough. Bob Wright stated his family went to Columbia University Medical Center for an assessment of his grandson. However, the assessment diagnosis and any form of autism treatment wasn't covered by health insurance. Wright had to pay $10,000 out of pocket to cover the medical expense. The hefty price tag for a diagnosis isn't one most families can comfortably afford. At that time, most insurance companies didn't cover any autism-related expenses. Due to the lobbying of Autism Speaks and their influence network, all states now require insurances to cover these costs, including ABA. With Medicaid and insurances now covering ABA therapy, the industry has exploded and is now valued at $2.1 billion a year. The ABA market is expected to grow to $2.45 billion by 2025. In 2006, the Wright spoke to others about their grandson's diagnosis and soon realized they were in the midst of an autism epidemic. This NBC executive and his family decided something must be done to avert the impending autistic crisis the world just couldn't afford. The Wright's predicament captured the attention of philanthropist and Home Depot founder Bernie Marcus. He donated $25 million to jumpstart the organization Autism Speaks. The goals of Autism Speaks were twofold, raise awareness and raise money for scientific and biomedical research. Bob and Suzanne Wright believed if you built the awareness, then the funding would come. Oh, and oh my, mm, yep. Yeah. With their tragedy narrative brand of autism awareness, millions upon millions of dollars were indeed raised. In the early 2000s, medical professionals told the Wrights that their grandson couldn't be treated unless he developed a medical abnormality. The Wrights were told autism is a developmental disability and you could treat many comorbidities, but you can't treat autism itself. So what the doctors told them then remains the same even now in 2021. You can't treat or cure autism, but you can treat some comorbidities and increase the quality of life of the autistic individual. To be very clear, if you're autistic, you're born autistic and you'll die autistic. Well, okay, so that's unless CRISPR or some other gene editing discovery becomes viable in the future. Until then, if that happens, this is how it is. We are born autistic. We're always autistic. So Bob Wright states, out of the $29 billion NIH budget, autism only, autism gets only 102 
million dollars. AIDS gets two point nine billion dollars, and breast cancer gets seven hundred million dollars, as they should. But people need to understand that this is the most prevalent childhood developmental disorder in the United States. Fact autism is not a disease. Yes, Bob, autism is is a developmental disorder and difference, but it's not at all like cancer, AIDS, or even Alzheimer's. The comparison to diseases by Autism Speaks founders and other folks related to this organization continues today. Autism Speaks raised more than $40 million their first year. They also touted they raised untold levels of awareness. This awareness happened because the rights used their power and status to leverage every opportunity to be heard and drowned out the voices of the autistic people who were protesting their organization and work to cure us. The year after they launched, Autism Speaks promoted the five-part documentary series Autism, The Hidden Epidemic. It aired on the Today Show, and afterwards they invited Bob and Suzanne Wright on as guests. Yeah, invite is a stretch. So let's remember here, Bob Wright is the NBC chairman and CEO until 2007. And prior to NBC, he held several positions at General Electric in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. He served as president and CEO of GE Capital Financial Services from 1983 to 1986 and served as GE's vice chairman until he retired from that role in 2008. Simply stated, yep, simply stated, if Bob Wright wants his Autism Speaks documentary aired on NBC, then Bob Wright gets his documentary aired on NBC. He's the boss. He's the boss's boss. He's the biggest boss of them all, right? So this is a power and privilege that most autistics have never had and never will have. The rights are the rights were also guests on The View, Charlie Rose, and Don Emis radio show. Autism Speaks went on to partner with the Ad Council and launched a three-year public service ad campaign. The PSA campaign went full force with the Autism Speaks Hallmark Tragedy and Fear narrative. Autism Speaks is still partnered with the Ad Council today. That means all PSAs by the Ad Council regarding autism have been shaped by Autism Speaks parent-led organization, not autistic people. These PSAs have done much harm, much harm to the autistic community. And here's a quote of one of their marketing pieces. Odds of a child performing at Carnegie Hall, 1 in 73,000. Odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 166. The rights and autism speaks board members' power and privilege was leveraged knowingly at autistic people's expense. Our voices were muted and often silenced by the uproar of non-autistic parents celebrities, and professionals speaking the Autism Speaks party line. Celebrities were part and parcel of Cure Autism Now can outreach. These star influencers were already hawking the autism tragedy narrative for filmmaker John Shaystack and his wife, Portia Iverson. When Autism Speaks and Can joined forces, that's when the star power really exploded. Every famous person speaking about autism was a voice for Autism Speaks and organizations like them. The silencing wasn't 
unintentional by the founders and board members of Autism Speaks. It was their goal to be the loudest voice on autism in the nation and therefore garner the most dollars for research and leverage the most influence to pass legislation on the autism therapies they promoted and liked. In order to do this, Bob Wright merged Autism Speaks with other autism organizations. The first of these organizations was National Alliance for Autism Research, NAAR. In 2006, Autism Speaks merged with Cure Autism Now in 2007. So now... Right now, here's where we get to the point and goal of the entire article, Autism's Angels, okay? And that is the Combating Autism Act. The Combating Autism Act was introduced in 2005 and signed into action by President George W. Bush in 2006. The bill would authorize almost one billion dollars for research over a five-year period. Not enough studies are done on children with autism to draw conclusions about its causes, and it's extremely frustrating to parents, says Bob Wright. Autism is a 24-7 problem. The children have to be looked after all the time, and the parents tend to be exhausted and broke. They don't have the time or resources to do many things, so we are trying to speak for them. Yes, Bob Wright just said that Autism Speaks is trying to speak for tired and broke parents. And there's no mention, of course, of any autistics who already have a voice and were being ignored, belittled, dehumanized, diminished, and silenced. By Autism Speaks. Mm -mm. Nope. Not a chirp there. So the rights weren't the only big money players in the world of autism, also known as the autism community. Jim and Marilyn Simons pledged $138 million for autism research over a five-year span. One of the Simons Foundation's first grants was $13 million for a five-year genetic study by Michael Wiggler, Ph.D., and Jonathan Seabat, Ph.D. Both professionals were from Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, home to one of the DNA decoders, James Watson. This research focused on genome scans of autistic children's nuclear families, and compared them to non-autistic genomes to seek autism-linked mutations. Wiggler and Seabot utilized DNA for Cured by Cure Autism Now and funded research... Oh, Wiggler and Seabot utilized DNA procured by autism... procured by Cure Autism Now... Cure Autism now funded research to collect DNA from families with more than one autistic child. They collected blood samples to create a gene bank. The first giant eureka moment that will make the big pharmaceutical companies feel something, feel there's something there has not come yet, but I am confident that it will. And this is a quote by John Shastak, founder of Cure Autism Now. So the article states, Until that time arrives, everyone agrees that early diagnosis and intervention, the earlier the better, are the keys to a brighter prognosis. Everyone agrees? Who is everyone? Definitely not the autistic activists that had been protesting the work of Cure Autism Now, Autism Speaks, and all of the other cure-driven organizations like them for decades already. Recently, many of these organizations have shifted to inclusion in their marketing language and have created softer marketing language around their genetic studies that they fund. But you know what? They're still all making choices about us without us. 
right? So during Autism Speaks Reign of Silence, autistic elders have continued their activism work and have been busy teaching and educating younger generations about their history, culture, and people. Today, many autistic activists are parents of autistics, too. The majority of us have raised our children to take pride in our genetic heritage. Many of our children have grown up and are now adults, and they are also autistic self-advocates, too. As a parent, I've taught my children they are worthy of far better than stigma, othering, hate, conversion therapy, and cures. I taught them Autism Speaks idea of autism does not define them. Autism Speaks doesn't speak for my children. Autism Speaks doesn't speak for my family. And Autism Speaks doesn't speak for me. I've taught my children and any other autistic or ally possible, they are worthy of far, far better than Autism Speaks and organizations like them. So you can now hear the roar of autistics on various social media platforms under the hashtag actually autistic. That's hashtag A C T U A L L Y. A-U-T-I-S-T-I-C. The entire push of this article is to promote applied behavioral analysis, ABA, and create a false hope for an autism cure or some type of autism recovery. It's to tout early diagnosis and early intervention with autism treatments, like autistic conversion therapy, it's to push for the support of the Combating Autism Act of 2006 that was signed four months later after the publication of this article. These Autism Speaks affiliated parents have all spoken to the dark truth of their thoughts on filicide and suicide because they claimed parenting an autistic was so difficult. These parents justified their honesty in documentaries that were seen worldwide and they exposed their child's most vulnerable and private moments to all. And this is done for what? Autism awareness? Build awareness, said the rights, and the funding will come. So yes, in this context... These parents' autism awareness campaigns were all about raising money to fund research. Research that would promote ABA as the great hope for autism. Research that would continue to look for a vaccine autism link years after Andrew Wakefield was proven a fraud and a liar. And research that would ultimately find a cure for autism. Mind you, a cure for autism would be a test during pregnancy that determined autism risk. <clears throat> Preventing the birth of an autistic child is the cure for autism. This is the same cure society has for Down syndrome. This is Eugenics 2021. Fact. Vaccines do not cause autism. Until the great cure for autism could be found, the only hope for autistics already born was applied behavioral analysis, ABA. And yes, the same ABA that had a failure rate of 90 to 95 percent, as it was stated in this article. The great hope here is that early intervention, the earlier the better, would increase the success rate of ABA with autistic children. The reason autistics aren't included in any quotes or seen in any of this advocacy is because autistic activists were kicked to the curb. Autistics fought the use of conversion therapy and definitely 
didn't support passing legislation to force insurance companies to cover the cost. With early intervention, we're seeing many more kids doing much, much better. Right now, getting a diagnosis and early intervention for a child of three is a big deal. But eventually, we're going to get these services at six months. In March, I gave a conference on how to help autistic kids who go to college. Ten years ago, I'd never have thought it would happen. And this is by Fred Volkmar, MD of the Yale Child Study Center. So the article goes on to state, for a handful of children, a handful, early intervention has led to the almost unthinkable actual recovery. And then let's not forget, and immediately after that sentence in parentheses, it states, although technically autism is not curable, a child can advance to the point where he or she no longer meets the clinical diagnostic criteria for the condition. Hmm. Yeah, even the article can't make a straight statement without some sort of circular speak. Yeah. So, fact, you can't cure autistics from being autistic. Fact. You can't recover an autistic from being autistic. Fact. You can groom an autistic to mask and hide their traits. Somewhat. However, this comes at the expense of the autistic child and promotes autistic burnout. Now, autistic burnout should not be confused with typical burnout. Autistic burnout can kill autistic people. Okay? And so, you can groom an autistic to mask and hide their traits somewhat, and then you can also place that autistic child high risk for PTSD and other lifelong trauma-related conditions. Guess what? This autism recovery happened for one parent's child. At least that's what Karen Siv Xcorn said about her autistic child. Xcorn was a former management consultant and the author of the book... The Autism Sourcebook, Everything You Need to Know About Diagnosis, Treatment, Coping, and Healing. Autism Speaks and other cure-motivated organizations were involved with the writing of this book, and they heavily promoted it as well. This book would be pushed worldwide to parents. The names printed on the book might look familiar. The foreword of the book is written by Fred R. Volkmar. M.D. of Yale University Child Study Center. Praise for the book is given by Tom Insel, N.I.M.H., Lee Grossman, Autism Society of America, Karen Margulie London from N.A.A.R., Peter Gerhardt from the Organization for Autism Research, Stephen Shore, an author, Karen Simmons from Autism Today, Shelley Hendricks Reynolds from Unlocking Autism, Marianne E. Felice from UMass Memorial Children's Medical Center, and Anne Di Chiara Foundation for Educating Children with Autism, Inc. Testimonies on the back cover include Temple Grandin, autistic author, Suzanne and Bob Wright, Autism Speaks, and Geraldine Dawson, at that time of University of Washington Autism Center. Karen Siff Excorn described Karen Siff Excorn described how ABA, several intense years of it, and some other therapies recovered her autistic son Jake. Jake was diagnosed at age two and at age nine, by the age of nine, his mom considered him recovered or cured. Right? So Xcorn admits the recovery rate is only five to ten percent. 
It's her hope that with research, that rate will increase. It was her goal to offer hope, but not false hope. Exxon also sits on the board of the New York Center for Autism. Fact, if your child is now cured or recovered. Fact, if your autistic child is now cured or recovered, they were either not born autistic or they're not cured or recovered and they are still very much autistic. Okay, so in September of 2005, the NYCA Charter School opened its doors. The school had a one-to-one -one teacher ratio for its ABA curriculum. ABA advocates stated that ABA was optimal for most autistic children. Autistic activists state that ABA is conversion therapy and abuse. Autistics say autistic state ABA is not optimal for any autistic ABA advocates are funded in some manner or another for their advocacy work autistic activists are not the article admits ABA can be grueling but it's effective at drawing autistic children out of their isolation. Okay. All right. So that doesn't compute. According to this article's ABA statistics, only five to ten percent of us, only five to ten percent of autistic students would find benefit. The circular talk in this article is dizzying. Also, the chances of an autistic developing PTSD or other lifelong trauma-related conditions from ABA is far, far more likely than a recovery. ABA was not covered by most insurance companies in 2006. Parents had to pay the expenses themselves, and the cost was about $62,000 a year. This is where the Combating Autism Act and other state-by-state -state legislation became critical. When legislation was passed in every state, insurance companies were mandated to cover the cost of assessment and for ABA therapy. This is where the Combating Autism Act and other state-by-state -state legislation became critical. When legislation was passed in every state, insurance companies were mandated to cover the cost of assessments and ABA therapy. Laura Slotkin and Eileen Lehner state that the NYCA Charter School is truly a labor of love. These folks aren't the only ones in a crusade for top quality ABA curriculum schools for autistics. The Child Development Center of the Hamptons CDCH was founded in 1996 by a parent of an autistic, Don Zimmerman Hummel. At the time, the school was raising funds for a preschool facility. Also seeking to raise funds, the Eden Institute, founded in 1975, and the Alpine Learning Group, founded in 1988, would launch capital campaigns to develop new programs. Everyone's agreed, the article states, that no matter how much is done, services are desperately needed. When autistics age out of school at 21, the state no longer pays for educational services, aids, transportation, or intensive ABA. Families must apply to the state for a disability fund, which even if granted, is not a sustainable amount to live on. Taken into one thing that no one has taken into account is the vast socioeconomic impact of autism. Looking ahead, just as society is hit with Alzheimer's crisis, there will also be 1.5 million people with autism who are no longer part of the school system. 
The burden will fall on the state and federal government. It's huge. Autism costs society close to $90 billion a year in education and services. And it will just get worse. Right now, a lot of it is borne quietly by the families. But that can't go on forever. And this quote is by John Shastek, founder of Cure Autism Now. The article goes on to state autism's financial toll is truly catastrophic. Therapies for a child with autism can run more than $70,000 a year. Parents take out second and third mortgages to pay for therapies, and their marriages buckle under the strain. It states that the divorce rate for parents of autistics is speculated to be up to 80%. This speculation is fabrication and an autism myth that still echoes today. The section ends with this cheery message. Whatever else autism means to parents, it usually means the end of their dreams for a normal life. Well, with tragedy narrative like that, who doesn't want to fight those epidemic autistic kids and prevent them from ruining their parents' lives? Heck, the autism even caused parents to divorce, and it was going to definitely, definitely bankrupt us all. Yeah, autism touched everyone. The only hope for these creatures was to normalize them and be mainstreamed by elementary school was ABA. And yes, that was sarcasm. Thank you very much. So while these spokespeople shared how expensive it was to care for an autistic child, using the therapies they promoted, ABA, they failed to mention the expected profits they would realize from their schools, companies, and other entities taking advantage of the exploding ABA market that they created. These parents fell to state that with the passage of the Combating Autism Act of 2006 and then later state-by-state -state legislation again, billions of dollars would be available to fund their schools, ABA services, companies, and more. Billions of dollars. Billions. 